everybody, along with Don Sutton, Skip Carey, welcoming you to another night of Atlanta Braves baseball. This time from Shea Stadium in New York, where the Braves and the Mets meet for the first time this year. And Don, the Braves struggling. They sent Steve Avery to the mound against a good one, Brett Saberhagen, for the Mets tonight. When you're not hitting the ball, you don't look good, and the Braves aren't and don't. And things are always magnified when you lose four in a row. I've always felt the worst time to evaluate a ball club is after a four-game losing streak or a five-game winning streak. Right now, the Braves fifth in fielding, fifth in team ERA. The pitching is good, the hitting not where it should be. Part of that, I'm sure, because Klesko is disabled, and part of that because David Justice is hurting. Front end of the lineup, Marquise Grissom and Jeff Lauser need to get on base. Sometimes it's deceiving. Braves are hitting well with men on base, but hitting like a bucket a quarter with nobody on. So they need to get st something started on the front end. Which means not enough men are on base. And we'll be back with the starting lineups, the play-by-play -play story, right after this. A cool, cloudy evening here at Shea Stadium. First of three as the Braves visit New York. Time for us to take a look at our Turtle Wax starting lineup. Here they are for the visiting Braves. Braves have dropped four in a row, need to get something going. Marquise Grissom will lead it off and play center field. He'll be followed by Jeff Blauser at short. Chipper Jones in the third spot will be in left field. Fred McGriff in the cleanup spot will play first base. He'll be followed by Dwight Smith. A little bit of a shuffle in the lineup tonight as Smith starts in right and bats in the five hole. Jose Oliva will follow him and play third. Charlie O'Brien gets the start behind the plate. Charlie will bat seventh. Mark Lemke at second base hitting eight. And Steve Avery will make his third start of the year and bat night. Defensively, the Mets with maybe some unfamiliar faces, some unfamiliar names to you. Otero starts in left field. That's Ricky Otero. Brett Butler in a new uniform again this year here in New York will start in center field. Carl Everett, most recently with the Florida Marlins. He came here in a trade with the Marlins. Will play in right. Edgardo Alfonso at third base, Viscaino at short, Jeff Kent at second, Bobby Bonilla will be at first, Todd Hunley will catch, and a good right-hander who is off to a slow start, Brett Saberhagen, will pitch. Here's a look at the umpiring crew tonight. Jim Beecham, representing Bobby Cox, has the lineup card. It's kind of like old home week when we come in here or when the Mets come down. Bobby Wine, who spent so many years as a part of the Braves organization, was the advanced scout, was also one of the lieutenants for Braves manager there down at Atlanta. There's a look at Wino. Any umpiring crew will line up like this. Dana DeMuth will call the balls and strikes. Wally Bell will be at first base. Jerry Lane at second. And Paul Rungi that you're looking at right there doing the gesturing. One of the real good guys. One of the good umpires in the National League. He'll be over at third base. Not a big crowd here tonight. It is a cool evening. It is overcast, a threat of rain in the area, but not supposed to start until tomorrow. Be patient with us tonight, and maybe not so much with us. As with the circumstances, I think the planes are taking off to the east tonight. So if it sounds like a strafing run, it probably is not. It's just some of the Delta flights getting out of here. The Mets are going to take the field. For Saberhagen, this will be start number three. He is 0-1. He's been knocked around pretty good. He's gone 12 innings in his two starts. He's allowed 10 earned runs. You see the earned run average. It is not a good one. It is not indicative of the type pitcher that Brett Saberhagen is. The league in his first two starts hitting almost 400 off of him. The strikeout total down base on balls about where they should be. Don't expect too many base on balls out of Brett Saberhagen. He has more hit, more wins, people with more wins than walks since 1900. Christy Matheson, you might expect it. But Brett Saberhagen did it last year. 13 walks during the year, that is absolutely unbelievable. And in the Braves lineup, only Fred McGriff has coaxed a base on ball out of Brett Saberhagen. Jones is facing him for the first time, and so is Oliva. But the rest of the lineup had had their hacks against Brett Saberhagen. And he throws strikes, pitches down in the strike zone, a heavy sinking fastball. Good change of speeds, likes to pitch on the outer part with the breaking ball. We're running a little bit tardy getting the start underway here today. But the Mets have gone out there. We should be going, kicking it off right away. There's Bobby Wine alongside manager Dallas Green, who came out with an interesting quote in today's paper. He says he's in midseason form, but his players are not. He said, I got to push them because they're just not prepared. 
Got 28 guys going out there, and I'll guarantee you there aren't five who can honestly tell you they have put the effort and the preparation and are ready to be on top of their game. Because after a while, it becomes an individual thing. You can run the pitchers you got, but if one hasn't had enough, you ought to run them some more. They call him a drill sergeant in some circles. A little, uh, maybe, Dutch uncle advice right here. David Justice with a long conversation with Oliva. That happened just prior to the starting lineups. Sometimes the pressures of being a youngster at third base and a hot spot on a ball club can lead you to where you need a conversation with some veteran players. And David, pretty level-headed guy who's handled success well. Just a little talk. Oliva will be at third tonight. Brett Saberhagen is almost ready. I've about done all the filibustering I can. Are you ready, Skip? Absolutely. Here to kick it off, Skip Carey. Okay, Don, thanks very much. Grissom hitting a 220 on the year with no homers, five RBI. And Saber Hagen ready to go to work. It's not very often, Skip, you look down the lineup and you go through the stats and you see, well, two, four, six, seven guys that have played against the pitcher and only one has been able to draw walks off of it. It's amazing. This guy's a good pitcher. He's had a terrible start. And hopefully he hasn't found the magic yet. Right through there, it's 0 1, and we're underway. Why do I feel like we both have tin cans and there's just a little string connected? So we're in the communications capital of the world. The 0 1 pitch. Knocked him off the plate. It's 1 and 1. Saber Hagen has hit a batter this year. The league is hitting 375 against him. That's unheard of. But it's awfully early. The 1 1. Threw it right by him. It's 1 and 2. He is a type pitcher that will come right at you. He is starting to pitch more above the strike zone than he used to. He throw that heavy sinking fastball and when he gets in a groove he can paint the outside corner all night long. Foul back count stays the same. A ball and two strikes. Now there's a lesson to be learned for everybody in watching Saberhagen. Saberhagen didn't come out with trick pitches. He basically has three. But he didn't come out trying to say, okay, here's my curve, here's my change. He came out with four fastballs to a fastball hitter. And, and he's establishing his fastball. And his breaking ball gets Grissom one away. Might have gotten away with a the pitch there. It looked like it was a little up. But Marquise missed it, one down. But he was able to do that because he had established fastball. He had shown Grissom that he had a good one, and he had him out in front with a belt-high curveball. Jeff Blauser at 233 on the year, still looking for his first RBI. Saberhagen ready to go to work. Popped him up to shoot. The second baseman, Jeff Kent, calls for it. Two gone in a hurry. Chipper Jones, the batter. You see the numbers on Jones for the year. He's hit the ball, I think, harder than that average would indicate, but he's had some tough luck. So is Brisbane, for that matter. First pitch strike to every hitter, 0 and 1 not a bad idea when you've never seen somebody. You can read the scouting reports, but just take one. Get an idea of the velocity, the movement. Breaking ball, 0-2. He foul tipped it into the glove of Todd Hundley. Any talk of a new ballpark here in New York for the Mets? None that I've heard of. Downstairs, one and two. I've heard uh, talk of a new one for the American League version of Major League Baseball here. I'll kick in 50 bucks to get it started if they want to build a new one. Let up downstairs, two and two. Dan Reagan, our director, says Fred Wilpon wants to build a retractable dome stadium. Through the fastball by him. High fastball as Don suggested. 
Well, we didn't exactly tear the cover off it in that inning. We go to the bottom of the first. No score. go quietly. Mets coming up. Here's the batting order. Brett Butler to lead it off. Edgardo Alfonso will bat second. Kit third spot. Bobby Bonilla cleaning up. He'll be followed by Todd Hundley. Number six is Carl Everett. Otero seven. Vizcaino eight. And Saber Hagen will bat ninth. Defensively, Jones, Grissom, and Smith in the outfield. Oliva, Blauser, Lemke, and McGriff make up the infield. Charlie O'Brien getting the start behind the plate and making start number three, Steve Avery. Avery only eight and two-thirds innings in his first two starts. The league hitting 314 against him, and he's better than that. Butler off to a good start, hitting at 359. No homers, two RBIs, 11 out of 35 in his career against the Atlanta lefty. And the bottom of the first is underway. Steve Rank. Butler's also doing what you're supposed to do as a leadoff hitter, Skip. He's averaging getting on base twice a game in the first 10 net game. The outfield plays in very shallow and around toward left. Curve is high and outside, and the count is even one and one. In the other baseball, Baltimore leads Boston two to one after an inning. Yankees failed to score in the first at Toronto. Cincinnati leads Florida two nothing down in Miami. That's after an inning. Another curve for a strike. One and two, the count. Edgardo Alfonso waits to hit next. Almost to the backstop. It's two and two. Sometimes I have seen pitchers have a little trouble adjusting to the mound and the field here and at Dodger Stadium. Skip the mounds in the bullpen are quite different. So sometimes it takes a few pitches to get familiar with it. Another curveball. Blouser up and throwing by a step. One up. So Butler is retired, and here's Alfonso. The kid's off to a good start, hitting 316. Alfonso, 5'11", 190 pounder. He's just 22 years old. Last year he played in double A at Binghamton, hit 293 with 15 homers. He's out of Venezuela, makes his home in Caracas. This is Avery's eighth start here at Shea Stadium. He has a very impressive record against the Mets. He's four and one, but his earned run average, I think, is what jumps off the chart at you. It's right around two. Doesn't allow many hits. Average is almost a strikeout an inning. That one's into the dirt. One ball, no strikes. Yeah, he's been tough at Shea. Two and other guys. Pitch well, too. Headline writer Hal Galima up here in the booth with us. And the pitch is in there, two and one. It's good pitching matchups all around for the whole three game series here. Hit hard, Blouser to his left, good play. And he took a base hit away. That ball was sharply hit. And Jeff Kemp, the hitter. This guy's a good ball player, but he's off to an awful start, hitting the 167 with three RBIs. Change up, down. Good to see Avery get some outs where the ball is hit on the ground early in the ball game. He's going to get his strikeout. Those are a nice play. Now, you're right. This guy is a good ball player. Remember, he was the guy not talked about in the David Cohn trade. It was Thompson that everybody was so high on. This guy has matured better and more quickly than Thompson. Little tap toward third, Oliva up. And an easy inning for Steve Avery, three infield roller. So nothing doing in the first for either team. At the end of one, no score. We go to the second inning. Fred McGriff will lead it off for Atlanta. McGriff, Smith, and Oliva will be the first three. Don Sutton, Skip Carey with you. Cleveland Indians still batting in the first. Lead Kansas City eight to nothing. Boy, they score some runs. McGriff, the one guy in the lineup who has done a good job against Saber Hagen. He's drawn the three walks. 13 out of 33. I think he's got a couple of dingers against him, too. And he does. 
close to 400. Six points away. In fact. Why do I feel like we're yelling at each other? Because you can't hear anything here. The pitch. High and away. One ball, no strength. Okay, I'll give $100 for the new ballpark, but that's my final. Uh, the 1-0. Let up. Good pitch. It's even now one and one. When you establish fastball early, you can accomplish so much more with your other pitches. McGriff had to see that he was buzzing people with the fastball. Now when you throw the changeup, it doesn't have to be as sharp as if you throw it a lot. Boy, he had a good cut there, fouled it back. That got the home plate umpire Dana Demuth. A ball and two strikes. Doesn't look like a guy that the league is hitting 375 against or that has a 750 earn run average. Interesting. The one two. Look out. He lashes a foul back, but it reaches the screen. Yeah, a lot of times there are shortstops pick in the low rounds who have the same batting averages as pitchers. But they're unfortunate as, as Brett Haberhagen, Saberhagen to have a good enough arm to do it. Not Joe Hesketh either. Ground ball towards second. Kent to his left. Fields throws him out, one away. So Haberhagen gets McGriff, and now Dwight Smith is the batter. <laughs> Dwight hitting 333 in limited playing time. He's driven in three runs. Alfonso in on the grass at third. That tailed up and away from Smith. One ball, no strikes. We're home again Friday night against the Reds. Threw the fastball right by him. He's got a good one tonight. It's one and one. Then the Rockies to follow. Boy, are they off to a good start. And then the Marlins come to call. There's two and one. Neither team has had a base runner. We're in the second inning. Let up and a good one. His arm motion is identical on the fastball and the changeup. And you notice he doesn't drop his elbow or do anything to kill the speed on it. He uses a grip, follow through, good arm speed, got good movement and good location. The 2-2. Two -two. Hummer, but he missed up and in. Three and two. How quick does that look on your hands after getting two changeups dropped on the outside? And now you don't have any idea what he'll throw on the three-two pitch. Because he's shown already that he can throw all three for strikes. I'd be looking fastball though if I were Dwight. He missed way high, and that's what he threw was the fastball. Renner at first, one down. Jose Oliva, the batter. <laughs> You see him shaking his head, and I'll bet you he knows right now. He tried to overthrow that. 3 2. He figures, I'm going to throw the fastball. He's looking for it, so I better reach back for a little extra, and he doesn't have to do that. Runner at first, one out. Oliva stands in. Charlie O'Brien moves on deck. Started to swing, tried to stop, but was in there anyway. 0 1. There's a pretty good hitter out in San Diego getting ready to start taking batting practice right now. And Tony Gwynn turns 35 today. Happy birthday to Tony Gwynn. He's a terrific player, good guy. And when you talk about a student of the game, they had Tony Gwynn in mind when they coined that expression. Uh, did you hear recently he's off to a good start? He was hitting over 400. And moaning and groaning, right? And viewing tapes every day yeah. of every swing he had taken. Saying, I'm pitiful. <laughs> Pitiful can play on my ball club any day. You betcha. A ball and a strike to Oliva. Runner at first, one out. Dwight a short lead over there. A little bit high, I guess. Two balls, one strike. They play Oliva around to hit toward right field a little bit. Past him, two and two. Normally, that means they're going to either one pitch him away or two. They expect him to be tardy on Saberhagen stuff, and looks like they're right on both counts. The 
2 2 pitch. Swung and popped up. On the infield, Hunley has to contend with the bat. Now Saberhagen takes care of that. There's a heads up play by the pitcher. And a great lesson right there. When that ball goes in the air anywhere in the infield, unless it reaches the outfield grass, a pitcher has nothing to do but be a traffic cop. Get there, get close. We saw a play yesterday. Uh, here's the pitch, a breaking ball out in front, pops it straight up. Look where Saberhagen goes. Immediately he goes, he's watching, gets the bat. Next thing he, he does, he took a glance over to see third baseman Alfonso. He did, wanted to make sure he didn't run into it. A whole lot you can do other than just stand around. And he was ready if the ball popped out of the glove to dive for it and make the out himself. Here's O'Brien up and in. One ball, no strikes. Smith at first with two down. The Mets have had the same problem that most teams have had. Their middle relief pitching has really been horrible. Well, he didn't pull any punches today talking about the no, guys being ready. Just missed the outside corner. Two balls and a strike. Sabregan, one of those pitches, e pitchers, even though he's a right-hander, a little bit difficult to run on because he takes so little time to unload. You're not going to win a lot of ball games with that going on. Renner goes, and there's a drive. Deep left field. That ball is going to get. A two-run homer for O'Brien, and the Braves have the lead. Started out a hit and run, and it turned out to be a hit and trot. I believe he wanted to come up and in on O'Brien. His control has been so good, he's hit so many spots, but watch this one. It'll be a little below belt high. And right on the inner half, Charlie likes the ball there, got the bat head out in front of it. The only question was, was it going to stay fair? Hit and run turned into what? Hit and trap. I like that. Lemke hits a foul. So it's 2 nothing about it. Two runs on one hit. And you never know when you're when you're going through struggles scoring runs you never know how much getting a home run from somewhat of an unexpected source might start the offense going inside to the lemmer to even the counter ball and a strike two out here but now two runs have scored. Into the fourth deck fumble down to the second. Are the Knicks and Pacers playing tonight? I think they are. That would influence the crowd, too. But what are there, 12 million people in this area? A lot of them chose to be somewhere other than Shea Stadium tonight. Ground ball to Kent. He has it on a convenient hop, and the inning is over, but not before the Braves score twice. On one hit. No errors, nobody left. We go to the bottom of the second. Atlanta 2, New York nothing. Our telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta National League Baseball Club and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, rebroadcast, retransmission of the pictures or descriptions of this game without the express written consent of the Atlanta National League Baseball Club is prohibited. Bobby Bonilla leads off the bottom half of the second inning. Avery goes to work and deals outside. One ball, no strikes. Bonilla, 7 out of 31 against Steve in his career. Two of those hits, no home run. High pop, short right field. Dwight Smith comes on. He's got a bead on that. One away. So Bonilla is retired, and Todd Hundley will be the batter. Batting tip, the catcher, number nine, Todd Hundley. All Braves all the time. That's Chop Talk, the Braves' official magazine for player features, columns, stats, farm system coverage, 
and much more. Subscribe now by calling 1-800-700-CHOP or look for Chap Talk on newsstand. 1-800-700-CHOP. Hundley off to a terrific start. He's hitting 324, four homers, 13 RBI. And in the top 10 and three pretty darn critical categories. Oh and two the count. There may be a whole lot of U-turns at home plate tonight. First lead Avery's had this year. Tonight. And the first one the Braves have had since Greg Maddox's start against the Phillies. Down and in, a ball and two strikes. Tomorrow night's game will be on Sports South on the Braves Radio Network. Kent Merker against Pete Parnish. Nowhere near with that one. Two and two. You know how to sew? A little. What do you got a button missing? Yeah, well not need. It's about to be. Well, if I don't have my blue blazer, I wouldn't know what to do. Line left field. That's trouble. Hunley heads for second with an easy double. Charlie O'Brien and Hunley both got the same pitches to hit. Fastball in her half, just above the belt. O'Brien's left the park. This didn't, but boy, he is quicker inside this year than I remember him being. Carl Everett, the batter, another switch hitter. He's out of Tampa, Florida. Played most of the year at Edmonton last year in the Marlins organization at 336. Then in 51 at bats at 216 at Florida. He's off to a bit of a slow start. And he doesn't get the high fastball. He's one of those guys that just seems to wear out Triple A baseball, but he can't make the next jump. And I think it frustrated the Marlins somewhat, trying to figure out what it was. They got a chance to make a deal, pass him on to the Mets. Got a second baseman, Kilvio Veras, from the Mets. So it's been a better deal for the Marlins thus far. He's a very talented youngster, but it's that next step that he's had trouble making. Pulled the string, had him out on front. Some guys, I don't know if he's one of them, but some guys against bad AAA pitching never miss. Right. Hit 500 against good AAA pitching, hit 200, and wind up hitting 300. And you think they're ready for the big leagues, and they get up there and they hit 100 because the pitchers are better than the better AAA pitchers. And you see bad pitching maybe once every 10 days or two weeks. Avery and O'Brien can't get together. They switch signs with a runner at second base. You know, this probably frustrates infielders, outfielders, and fans. But until they start putting somebody else's name behind the one loss record, that is the smartest thing to do. When you're not sure, it costs you 30 seconds to call the guy out and have a talk. Now they know they're in agreement. Oh, and two, the count ever two for 15 with runners in scoring position. Ricky Otero waits to hit next. Grounded to third. Oliva up, looks the runner back, and gets his man at first base. Almost threw it low, but no problem. And Otero stands in. He's out of Vega Baja, Puerto Rico. Here's Oliva. Side wheels this one. You see him running back. Now the throw. The nice thing about having a tall first baseman, he shortens that throw somewhat. But had a chance of skipping over there. Good play by McGriff on the other end. Otero, little guy, 5'7", 150 pounder. Right in there, 0 1. He too played at Binghamton last year, hit 294. Frank Howard coaches first for the Mets. Mike Covich at third. Upstairs. Otero hitting just 133 on the year. Cincinnati's upped its lead to 3 0 over Florida. They're in the third. 
There's big Frank Howard. Well, what power he had. And one of the nicest men in baseball. You hear the term gentle giant used a lot and overused maybe, but it sure fits that guy. He was with the Braves organization as a hitting instructor for a little while. Almost hit it. Two balls and a strike. You wonder if a guy like Otero wouldn't be better served, maybe choking up on the bat a little bit. He's 5'7. He is not out of your home run mold, but he's right down on the knob. So again, three and one. He and Rafael Belliard, about the same size, but Rafael, you see, choke up and try to shoot the ball to the right side. He's done a little uh, extra work on his bat handle, but look where he is. He's right down on the knob. Runner at second, two out here. Ground ball to second, Lemke fields, Lemke throws, inning over. The one out double does no harm, one hit, no run. No airs, one left at the end of two, Braves two, that's nothing. Top of the third, Braves up by two. Time for us to tell you what's on deck for the Braves. Brought to you by Armor All Deck Protector. Tomorrow night, right here against the Mets on Sports South. Then on Thursday, we will have the Mets again. There it is on TBS. Back home on Friday, we start a nice long homestand. The Reds will kick it off with a 7:35 game. 7:40 game. We'll join you at 7:35. That's coming up next for the Braves. Steve Avery leads off the third inning. Beautifully done, Don. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. To the screen, 0 and 1. Avery Grissom and Blouser in the Atlanta third. 2 1 and 0 for the Braves, 0 1 and 0 for the Mets. The one Atlanta hit. A two run homer by Charlie O'Brien after Dwight Smith had walked in the second inning. The 0 1 pitch. It's 0 and 2. You get two runs on one hit against this guy, you feel like you're stealing. Yes. You've really got good stuff. Change of pace. It's not fair. You should kick him out of the pitcher's union for that. Buzzes two fastballs and then drops one of his best changeups right on the outside corner. He gives him his third strikeout. Watch the location, the movement, the arm speed. He had everything going for him on that pitch. Grissom, a strikeout victim, his first time. Loop fouled on the right side, nothing and one into the seats. Those first two ball games, somebody had to be impersonating Saberhagen to put those numbers up there compared to what we're watching tonight. Marquise must have broken a bat because he heads back toward the dugout and disposes of the war club. Doing a talk show, Don, before the games. Mm -hmm. The most asked question is who is going to assume the leadership role on the team now that Terry Pendleton's gone? I'll give you my answer and see if you agree or disagree. I think that is the most, I mean, we'll miss Terry Pendleton tremendously as a ball player and a person. First to pitch, look out, curveball didn't bite. <laughs> but I think leadership is the most overrated. You've got a manager, you've got coaches, you've got highly paid professionals who know how to do their job. Didn't mean to, found it off. Sure, every now and then some guys need a kick in the tail and others a pat on the back. But I think different guys can act as leaders for different personalities. Winning, winning ball clubs have always had somebody you could go talk to when things weren't going well. Grounded to deep short. This guy, no, throws him out, two down. And somebody who could be somewhat of an intermediary between the coaches, uh, the manager, and the players. And at one time here with Number the Braves, when Terry Pendleton was here, it was a role he was very comfortable with. It was a role he came here and eased into. It was one of the reasons he was brought here. If you have a mature ball club and if you have a good ball club, most good ball clubs I've ever been on have had more than one. And I think there's some great candidates here. I think David Justice is one. The guy hitting now is one. 
I think right now it's a little tough for Jeff because of the prolonged contract negotiations, the fact he's off to a slow start. But in my mind, and I don't know if you'll agree with this or not, when you talk to Braves players, there are a lot of very knowledgeable baseball men out there. Nobody on the club knows as much about all the facets of baseball as Jeff Blauser. So he's qualified. It just seems to me some guys need a up-tempo type guy, which Pendleton was. Right. And other guys need a more quiet approach, somebody who puts their arm around you and talks to you like that. So it's... I don't think there is one leader. I think it's a very overrated commodity in baseball. Well, you remember we saw in the dugout prior to the game, David Justice and Jose Oliva. And David Justice in a very uh, intense conversation with Oliva. But we don't know if they were discussing restaurants or if they were discussing baseball. Probably the latter. It wasn't restaurants. Uh-oh. Blouser gets hit, but is apparently okay. He tied for the club lead in that category last year, and Jeff, who seems to step in the pitches, is hit more than anybody on the Braves. I think he's assumed the lead in that this year. Watch the pitch and see if you can hear Saber Agon. Either Saber Hagen or somebody with a high squeaky voice yell, watch it. All I heard was an airplane. Ball up and in, one ball, no strikes. It's the second batter Saber Hagen has hit this year. And Hunley to the mound to talk to him. Runner at first, two out. That's three times Blouser has been plunked. That conversation comes to a close. A lot of room down the left field line for Chipper. Alfonso plays wide of the bag too. A grounder down the line might get a run home. Blouser runs fairly well. Almost hit him again. Breaking ball inside. Two and zero. One more comment on that leadership thing, and then we put a lid on it if you want. But I think worse than not having anybody at all in the quote leadership role is having somebody not qualified yes. who thinks he has to do it and assumes the role. Two balls, no strikes. Jimmy Williams runs through the signs at third. Pat Corrales coaching at first. Popped up down the left side. Alfonso going over at the tarp. Has no play. He took a shot down that left side. But fouled it out. Two balls and a strike. Cleveland still batting in the second leads Kansas City 10 to nothing. Toronto over the Yankees 4 nothing after 3. Cincinnati bats in the third leading Florida 3 nothing. Houston 4 nothing over Pittsburgh after an inning and a half long year for the Pirates. Three and 0 oh, McGriff is next two out trouble for Saberhick. A lot of guys come to the big leagues with talent. The ones who stay and are successful are the ones who learn to adjust. And Chipper Jones has already shown you as a very young player, he can make an adjustment in one at bat. Swinging 3-0 and oh, and a solid hit. So two are on with two out. Three one pitch, rather. Watch him stay on that back foot, doesn't overcommit, hits against the front foot, catches a high fastball. It's the same one he blew by him earlier in the ball game. Didn't try to pull it right up the middle. That's the adjustment. So Fred McGriff with a chance to do some two-out damage here. Blouser at second, Jones at first. McGriff grounded to Kent at second base his first time. All of a sudden that sharp curveball is staying up in the strength zone, isn't it? Well, the first time through, if a hitter don't if a hitter doesn't adjust, you just stay the same way. If a hitter does adjust, then a pitcher has to counter it by going a different way. And if you can't get your pitches over, then you can't counter. 
That's in there, and it's one and one. They play Fred very deep and around toward right. He's got room down the left field line, too. Never ceases to amaze me. You see you, all these scouts follow teams, and Braves will play two consecutive teams. First to hit. At the knees. They'll play two or three consecutive teams where you'll see Fred McGriff come up, and one team will defense him entirely different than somebody else. Different theories and different ways of pitching to him, I guess. Yeah, it just seems to me it's amazing that a guy could hit so different, say, against the Mets than he would Colorado or Cincinnati. Fast ball, he fought it up, still one and two. Strength against strength there. And they played it to a draw. Strikeouts for Saberhag and a two out threat comes to nothing. One hit. No runs, no errors, and two runners left. We go to the bottom half of the third inning with your score. Braves two, Mets nothing. Well, we go to the bottom of the third and hope Heather Avery is enjoying the game. <laughs> Jose Vizcaino leads off the bottom of the third. Bounces up there, one ball, no strikes. Vizcaino, Saber Hagen, and Brett Butler are two up here. A little bit low. Two and oh, Vizcaino hitting 250 on the year. A homer, three RBIs. Last year at 256 for the Mets. That was a strength. Three homers drove in 33 runs. Came up in a Dodger organization at a time when they had a handful of shortstops, and the Dodgers decided to let Vizcaino and Juan Bell go and stayed with Offerman. Short the bunt took a strike. Vizcaino thought it was high. It's two and two. Not even sure if Juan Bell is still playing, but. I think sometimes if you're a player, you need to find a niche that fits your personality, that has a, a manager and a GM that lets you blossom, and I think he's found it here. Still two and two. Why is organ music so loud now at ballparks? Do you know, Don? Because it's free. Just missed. Avery thought he had a strikeout. Full count. Three and two. Here it's to compete with the planes. I can't explain it other places. Grounded to short. Blows are up and throwing. One up. That's one thing I don't understand. The other thing is, how did baseball survive in the 40s, 50s, and 60s before all the marketing and promotions people got their little walkie-talkies that they run around with now? You notice that? Everybody's got a walkie-talkie. Saber Hagen, the batteries, one out of two. What do you call that? Unmode? <laughs> no. Hopefully it was free. A ball and a strike. Maybe he's just frightened. You live up here, you spend a lot of your time in fear. Normally a guy comes in with a cut like that, he, six or seven people want to go with him to get even. Just missed for the breaking ball, two and two. I think it's originally the, the one of the original brush cuts. It's original, all right. The two-two. Swung, fly ball, center field. Grissom going back. He's there. He makes it look so easy. Two up. Saberhagen hit it pretty well, but out.
top of the order, Brett Butler will advance to the plate. Good pitching for Avery tonight, and I think the encouraging thing, eight outs, only two have been recorded in the air. He's keeping the ball down. He's getting good movement. Normally with Avery, he gets a lot of ground balls on his changeup, on check swings or on, on swings that are, have thrown the timing off. Butler stands in there. Tries to butt his way on. Oliva can't make it. You do that with two out, you got to figure guy's going to try to steal second, don't you? Yep, because right now you need to be on second. Perfect, but I think there are two schools of thought on that, Skip. Number one, not letting him butt. You're asking him to give up one of the best weapons in his arsenal. He is one of the most successful bunters in the 80s and the 90s. But you would rather have him hit a double. Brett has yet to steal a base this year. Let's see if he's running. Good job by Fred McGriff. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Good job by Fred McGriff because Fred could have stayed on the bag and tried to make that close. Instead, he came off. He conceded the base, but he stopped the ball from going down the right field line. Right field line. Thanks for tapping me. It's okay, buddy. Edgardo Alfonso is the banner. He's running. They got him picked off. Close. Got him. Inning over. One three six gets Butler. And he was trying to get to second base. One hit. No runs, no errors, nobody left. We played three in New York. It's 2 0 Atlanta. Tomorrow night on TNT, the NBA playoffs continue at 8 o'clock. The Bulls take on the Orlando Magic. Game two of the Eastern Conference semifinal series. Magic won game one on Sunday. NBA playoffs on TNT tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. We go to the fourth inning. Here with the play-by-play -play story, Don Sutton. All right, Skip, thank you very much. Dwight Smith to lead it off. Oliva and O'Brien to follow. That's a little bit tardy on that one, and it's 0-1. Smith, with one out, drew the walk in the second inning. One of only three base runners. I think that four base runners. Blouser got hit by a pitch. And O'Brien, one out later. Followed it with a homer in the left field corner. All the scoring by either side. Good breaking ball, and it's 0 and 2. Fight off the changeup. Still no balls and two strikes. Brett Saberhagen just turned. 31, April the 11th. Boy, it seems like he's been around forever. Straightening him up with the fastball, one and two. Born in the Chicago area, now makes his home in Babylon, New York. He broke into the big leagues with a flag upstairs. 10 and 11 his first year with Kansas City after only one year in the minor league. Started at Class A, went to Double A. They had seen enough to give him a shot with Kansas City back at 84. Again, Smith fouls it away. Two balls, two strikes. His best year was in 1989 with Kansas City, 23 and 6. An earned run average that uh, almost unheard of. A year like we've seen Greg Maddox have. 260. Career earned run average of right about 3-2. He's put together a pretty good career. He may be one guy that has a shot of winning over 100 ball games in both leagues. Not a lot of guys have done that. He has 110 in the American League. 24 over here, but as long as he's healthy, you can bet he's going to add to that total. Upstairs, three and two. change up. Strikeout number five. Two in a row for Saberhagen. One gone brace half of the fourth inning. This is what separates the men from the boys. A 3-2 change. You can see Dwight way out in front. No way you can look for it. He's throwing you 95 miles an hour on the pitch prior to that. Here's Oliva. Popped up his last time. In the hole. Tough play. Did he get the tag? 
Good job by Bobby Bonilla. Good play on both ends. Two gone. Jose is a great big guy. He doesn't run well at all. Most guys beat this out. But he was still three steps from the bag when the tag was made. Might have cost himself a little there by trying to sneak a peek to see if it went into left field. Here's O'Brien. Got a fastball inside. Hit it just inside the foul pole down the left field line. And for Charlie, his first home run of the year, his first and second RBI. Didn't mean to, it's one and one. O'Brien and Saberhagen played here together on the Mets. I've never asked a catcher if that's an advantage to hit against the guy you caught. That's always been Pete's theory. He feels like it is that catchers, generally speaking, hit pitchers they used to catch very well. Well, you know there's stuff. You've seen it coming at you. One and two to O'Brien. On the ground, hot smash. Booted by Alfonso. Catcher running, he still gets him. Good play by the Met third baseman of staying with that ball. And Saberhagen back on track, sets him down one, two, three in the fourth. We move to the bottom of the fourth inning at Shea. Braves to Mets nothing. You see the score? One swing of Charlie O'Brien's bat. The difference in the ball game. Both pitchers working on two hitters. Avery will start the fourth for the Braves, kicking it off for the Mets. Alfonso, Kent, and Bonilla. First three do up. Got to be honest with you, I hadn't heard that much about Edgardo Alfonso. He's only been in the Mets organization since '91. But his numbers in the minor league, very impressive. He's only hit below, well, he's never hit below 290. There's a strike at the knees, and it's 0-1. He made the jump last year from single A to double A. Hit 293 there, 15 homers. Good contact hitter. Walked 64 times, struck out 55. And then from double A to the big leagues. One and one to count. Gardo, E D G A R D O. In the air to center and hit pretty well. Long run for Grissom. He's not going to get it. That's a book rule, ground rule double. One hops over the fence. He hit that breaking ball a long way. Fooled me a little bit. He's got a nice, easy swing, and the ball just jumps off his bat. No chance for Grissom. So the Mets get the leadoff man at second. It'll bring up Jeff Kent. Kent who grounded to third his first time up. Like a number of players early in the year, Jeff Kent struggling when he gets men in scoring position. That's down low and it's 2 and 0. Kent has made some adjustments in his batting stance and his batting style. If you remember from last year, a slightly open slightly open stance and then he would get up on that front toe. Got his hands lowered a little bit. Good pitch from Avery. of the Toronto Blue Jays organization back in 92. David Cohn went to the Blue Jays. He and Ryan Thompson came to the Mets. Been a better deal for the Mets at this point. Out of play, two and two. Sometimes, though, it's a crapshoot when you trade 
a veteran player for youngsters. You're just hoping they mature. And in this case, this has been a real fine for the Mets. Well, you can look at the Grissom deal. Uh, the Braves know Tony Taransko is going to be a fine player and already is. But Grissom is further advanced, and the Braves are trying to win it right now. It's the win now versus win in the future. And money, of course. Off the fist. O'Brien's got a shot at it and makes the catch. Familiar territory for Charlie O'Brien. I'm sure he's done that more than once here at Shea Stadium. That'll bring up Bobby Bonilla. Bonilla flied to right his first time up. Switch hitter bats right against Avery. Stairs one and oh. Outside. But he has been involved in an interesting transaction. He was selected by the White Sox off the Pirates roster back in 1985 in that Rule 5 draft where you can draft, but you have to keep him on the Major League roster. White Sox turned right around and traded him back to the Pirates. That's back our way. Very close back our way, and it's 2-1. and one. So a lot of times what you see a club do, let's say that the Braves had drafted a player and then they didn't want to keep him on the roster, they might trade to get him. Pirates, on the other hand, kind of upset at losing him, less than a year later made a trade to get him back. Alfonso at second. Three and one to count. Yes, he did. Wally Bell right on top of that call. Boy, I don't know. We might have gotten a break there. Another good bit of pitching by Avery. No way you can be looking for a 3-1 change. Now payoff pitch. off of Benilla's foot. He may be mad about two things. Number one, I bet you he thinks he missed his pitch, and that took a bite out of him. Oh, boy. Right on the shin. Taking a little while to get over that one. Obviously an organist who has never fouled one off his or her foot playing Reveille. Taps would be more appropriate, wouldn't it? Well, something softer would be more appropriate. <laughs> Another 3-2 pitch. And again, Bonilla stays alive. Braves with two in the second. That's all the scoring. Two runs on a couple of hits for the Braves. The Mets now with the double off the bat of Alfonso, their third hit of the game. Hunley had a double, Butler had a single. In the air to center. Grissom, who plays shallow, will make this one look easy. Two outs. To tonight's game, here are the Tylenol leaders. Tops and home run ratio in the National League. 
That's some pretty lofty territory, one out of every eight and a half at bat. I think I saw another bat on that list. I think Rico Bronio was on that list. For real? For real. Huntley has a double. He's one for one. Change up catches the corner. It's 0 and 1. Hundley, the son of longtime Cubs catcher Randy Hundley. Matter of fact, it still makes his home, does Todd Hundley in the Chicago area. Last time I saw his dad, he was involved in the fantasy camps, helping teams set up those things. I know he ran one for the Cubs. Yeah. Randy was a catcher in Atlanta. Fans might remember, the older fans, back in 1964. And he caught every day. Double headers. Wore the same number as his son, number nine. Upstairs, one and two. Who was the catcher they used to have here that had trouble throwing back to the pitcher? Mackie Sasser. Mackie right? Sasser. Yeah. Is, he, is he with Seattle now? He was for a time. Got him. What a great job of pitching by Steve Avery. Gives up the leadoff double to Alfonso. It then sets down Kent, Bonilla, and Hunley. Heart of the order. Four in the books. Bray still lead it. Night here in New York. We move to the top of the fifth inning. Skip Carey and Don Sutton with you for three more outs. That's a pretty good lid right there. That's the brave chef. Lemke, Avery, then the top of the batting order, Marquise Grissom to lead it off. The second. Convenient hop for Kit. Makes it look easy. One pitch, one out. Here comes Steve Avery. Avery struck out swinging his first time up. Saber Higgins threw two fastballs by him and then dropped the changeup right on the outside corner. Started him with the changeup again. Avery walked back to the dugout after that first strikeout with a big smile on his face. They will not play golf together when Saber Higgins comes to Atlanta. Three pitches, two outs. Very economical, Mr. Saberhagen. Two gone in the fifth inning. Mackie Sasser's now with the Pirates, by the way, Hal okay. tells me. They always knew he was going to be a good hitter and was a good receiver back there. Isn't it amazing that... Dale won? Murphy had that same problem when he came up with the Braves. That's why he moved yeah. to the other position? In fact, his dad had the great line in Number spring nine, training when Dale had thrown about four balls in the center field a couple back to the mound and a couple guys trying to steal and his dad came in that clubhouse down in West Palm and said Murph if any of those guys ever try to steal center you're going to get them two outs for Grissom first pitch is high and it's one and oh only a father could get away <laughs> with something like that didn't mean to couldn't lay off the high fastball it's one and one Fouls away the changeup. That'll make it one and two. Well, we're going to go to radio after this half inning, and I don't know about you, but it's okay with me. <laughs> you know, if you're going to get a, you got to get a nap here. You better do it while they're hitting, because between innings, there's so much going on, and it's so loud. You can't. One and two, aggressive. 
On the ground, another chance for Kent. Handles it smoothly. That's a good inning for Saberhagen. He has now set down seven in a row. Braves go one, two, three in the fifth inning. We're halfway home. Braves lead it two to nothing. Good evening, everybody. Joe Simpson along with Pete Van Weeren with you now as we go to the bottom of the fifth at Shea Stadium and a Charlie O'Brien home run has staked the Braves to a 2 nothing lead. Great pitchers battle. Avery has looked good. Brett Saberhagen has looked good, except for that one mistake. Avery and Saberhagen both like to work quickly, and Steve ready to go here. He'll face Carl Everett, Ricky Otero, and Jose Vizcaino. Everett tries to draw the infield in, but pulls the bat back. It's 1-0. He grounded a third his first time up. Got off to a hot start, but he has cooled off, and Everett lays off that pitch. It's 2 0. 14 strikeouts and 44 at bats. Fouls that one off of O'Brien. It's 2 1. Avery did some pretty good country pitching in the fourth inning. Gave up a leadoff double to Alfonso. Fell behind Kent and Bonilla, but was able to retire both of them. And then struck out Todd Hunley. Took a little off and it's a little outside. Three and one. He has not walked a batter tonight. He has spanned only one, and that was Hunley. Three one pitch. Took a little off again. That's the pitch he threw. Bobby Bonilla three and one. And got the Met first baseman to chase it as well. Three and two to Carl Everett, the former Florida Marlin. Line to right. Dwight Smith had him played deep, though. Has a beat on it and makes a catch. One out. Dwight Smith right in the right spot. And that'll bring up the diminutive Ricky Otero, who grounded a second his first time up. Which he shows, he shows bunt. Pulls it back. 0 and 1. We are having some audio problems here, Joe. I'll be with you as soon as we All get right, it straightened buddy. out. <laughs> We're getting getting it closed in on. Foul back 0 and 2. Otero, Butler, and Everett might be the smallest outfield in baseball. Otero 5-5. Butler listed at 5-10, but get out the tape. Carl Everett, six feet. Breaking ball bounce foul. Still 0 and 2. Otero and Edgardo Alfonso playing third tonight. Two of the brighter prospects for the Mets. Both played at double A last year. Just missed one and two. That's unusual for position players to make that jump. You'll see a pitcher make that jump every now and then, but position players, they almost always want them to have a full year triple A before they bring him up to the big leagues. Still one and two. But one thing's for sure. One thing that Dallas Green looks for are guys that put in a little effort. And if you play hard and hustle hard, you're going to get a chance. That's going to be out of play as well. Otero hangs tough. Avery looking for his second strikeout. Curve, soft liner toward Blouser. He'll have to hurry, throws low. Fred scoops it up and got it. Nice play by Fred McGriff. Jeff knew he had to hurry and made a low throw. Otero showing great speed for the right-handed batter's box getting down the first base line. That was a close play first. That's a tough one to handle, too, if you're the first baseman. A little wide of the bag, you just kind of have to make a wild swipe at it. Fred able to come up with it. That'll bring up Jose Vizcaino. Oh for one tonight with a ground out. Oh and one.
kind of an oddity about the Mets leading the National League in home runs with 16 and leading the major leagues in sacrifices. This guy you know, alone has five. Good curveball toward Lemke, but he's got it. And a good inning for Avery. Mets go in order in the fifth. Braves still lead it two to nothing. Tonight's Budweiser game summary, 2-0. The Atlanta Braves leading the New York Mets. Charlie O'Brien's home run, the difference. The Mets 0 for 5 with runners in scoring position. And Steve Avery continuing his mastery here at Shea Stadium. He pitched pretty well down in Florida the other night. Had one inning where he gave up two runs on a couple of bloops and some bad luck. But a much better performance tonight. Has scattered three hits and has not walked a batter. Blouser, Jones, and McGriff. Do up Jeff aboard after being hit by a pitch his last time up takes a strike four for his last 13 he's beginning to warm up a little everybody talked about Maddox this year last year Pete but Brett Saberhagen quietly had the second best year of anybody in the national yeah, it's league. almost as if if you reverse the teams put Saber Hagen on a team that was playing as well mm -hmm. as the Braves where he might have been the Cy Young winner fastball roped into left field Blouser gets things started for the Braves here in the sixth inning with a solid single in the last two nights Jeff Blouser looking much more confident at the plate we saw him take some swings and some pitches out of the strike zone when he was in that slump striking out a lot but now he's much more competent much more aggressive up there and the only time Saber Hagen's been hurt tonight was when he left his fastball upstairs O'Brien's home run one of them here's chipper Lowser back to the bag Jeff one for two in the stolen base department chipper tonight one for two with a line single to center that might be two Viscaino to Kent the turn not in time. Nice hard slide by Blouser kept Kent from making an easy throw to first. One out. That'll bring up McGriff. Jeff Kent, one of the bigger second basemen in the league, too. He may be saying to second base umpire Jerry Lane that Blouser was a little too far from the bag on that takeout. Fred's fighting it a little bit right now. 0 for 2 tonight. Change up. That'll reach the seat. 0 and 1. Saber Higgin last year. I'm sure Skip and Don told you with the 13 walks. Only the third pitcher since 1900. To actually record more wins than walks issued. Matthewson, Christy Matthewson did it twice in 1913 and 14. Slim Sally did it in 1919. Another fly ball left. This one may be playable. Foul territory, long run, but nobody can get there. This guy, you know, gave it a good effort. 0-2 to Fred. They have him played way around toward right, and that's why. The left fielder Otero had no chance. You could tell Edgar Alfonso's unfamiliarity with his ballpark when he was going down into foul territory after that pop up. He did. He was running a pass receiver's route. <laughs> he wasn't sure where that wall was or where the ball was. Ran a little corner route, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, and two to McGriff. Change up, but he's able to lay off. Dana DeMuth almost threw up the right hand, but it's one and two. Fred now three for his last 24. About as deep a slump as he's been in since wearing a Braves uniform. Uh-huh. Fastball. This one might be two. Kent to Viscaino. Quick return in time. They got it that time. Nice 4-6-3 double play. Gets Saberhagen out of some trouble. And we go to the bottom half of the sixth inning. Still a 2-0 ball game. the Mets in their half of the sixth inning 
Braves on top, two to nothing. Avery's fastball is high. No runs, three hits for the Mets. Braves got their two runs in the second inning on a long home run down the line by Charlie O'Brien. 2-0 to the pitcher. Saberhagen, Butler, and then Alfonso for the Mets. Three and zero. Saberhagen, a 19th round draft choice by the Royals back in '82, because he had had some arm trouble pitching. There's a strike. A lot of the teams shied away from him because of the arm trouble, but the Royals took a chance, drafted him as a shortstop, and the arm came back. And look what happened. That's going to be extra bases. He hit it past Oliva, and Saberhagen heads to second with another leadoff double for the Mets. Their fourth hit, their third double. Well, with the pitcher batting, the Braves defense playing well off the line. Anytime a pitcher can pull a ball in that situation, he's got an extra base hit. See how long it took Chipper Jones to get over there to pick up that ball? When Alfonso let off the fourth inning with a double, Jeff Kent didn't appear to even try to get him over to third base. He popped out. Bonilla flied out. Hunley struck out. But you can bet that Brett Butler is going to get him to third base somehow. Butler one for two. He had a perfect bunt single down the third base line his last time up. Chokes up on the bat. Pulls the bat back. One and, and, oh. and you have to really be careful here. You've got to play for the bunt in this situation. Butler an excellent bunter, but also there's a huge, huge hole on the left side of the infield with Oliva charging in from third and possibly staying back to take a throw at third. And Blouser having to pay attention to that runner at second keep him from getting too big a lead. Look at the size of that hole on the left side. Yeah, it creates some terrible defensive alignments for you. He's butting. Another good one. Might be a hit. Good play Oliva. It'll be a sacrifice and he gets Saberhagen to third. But that guy is a bunning maestro. Took a terrific play by Oliva to get him. Well, this is the perfect run. You want to commit the third baseman to making the play so the runner can get over there okay. And the only way Oliva gets Butler here is with a barehanded pickup and throw on the same motion. If he picked that ball up with his glove, he never would have gotten Brett Butler. Well, something else, too, Pete. If you look at the way the grass is now groomed here at Shea Stadium, they have the grass growing right up to the line down the third and first base line, and that's certainly going to accommodate Brett Butler. When he tries to roll in close to the line, the grass is going to hang on to it. No chance of it rolling foul. Here's Alfonso. He is grounded out. Hit a ground rule double over the dead center field wall his last time up. You can see how close the grass is to the line. Avery ahead quickly. 0-1. The infield plays in on the corners. Blouser and Lemke about halfway. One and one. This guy can play any of the infield positions, but he's got some pop in his bat. Pretty good power for an infielder. Last year at double A, 15 homers, 75 RBIs. And he drove another one to center field. Grissom playing a little deeper this time. Has a beat on it, makes the catch. But that's going to get Saberhagen home. It'll be a sacrifice fly for Alfonso. His sixth RBI, and we've got a 2-1 ball game. Very good fundamental. Looking young hitter, only 21 years old. All he was trying to do that at bat, get a ball up in the air, deep enough in the outfield to get the run in, and he did it. So that spoils the shutout bid by Avery. And now he's got to worry about just keeping the lead. Here's Jeff Kent. 0 for 2, ground out, pop out. Interesting the way the outfields played him today. He's a dead pull hitter, tries to pull virtually everything, but they're playing him well off the line and left. Grissom has him shaded toward right center. Down in the dirt, 2 and 0. Oh. Last time up when he had a runner in scoring position, he was trying so hard to pull the ball that even though he got a hit in the count, wound up popping out of foul territory as Avery and O'Brien did a good job of keeping the ball away from him. Get 
292 last year with 14 homers. 3 and 0. Some pretty good fundamentals by the Mets here in the bottom half of the sixth. He's taking his 3 and 1. Avery's 3 1 pitch. Curve bounced foul. Last year, Steve, 4 0 oh in the month of May, an excellent ERA of 218. But the rest of the season, he was 4 and 3 in his ERA, 4.75. That's McMichael who begins to loosen up behind him. And there's a drive to deep center field. Will Grissom get this one? No way. It'll go to the wall. Ken on his way for two. He rounds second. He'll hold there with a two out double. Five hits for the Mets tonight. Four doubles. And Leo Mazzoni out to talk to his pitcher. Take another look at the pitch here. Not really that bad a pitch. It was down and away. But Jeff Kent with his power is able to get it all the way to the wall in left center field. That gets the Braves bullpen going. Kent really strong. 6 1, 185. Able to go out and get that one. You're right, Pete. This buys a little time for McMichael to get loose. Normally, you make a pitch in that location to a guy who's a dead pull hitter, and you get a ground ball of the shortstop. You don't normally get a line drive of the wall. True. But more work for Avery to now. He, he fell behind Kent 3 0. And now he's got to deal with Bobby Bonilla. Bonilla has flied to right, flied to center. Curveball, tough play down the line, knocked down by Oliva, but a good play. That saved a run. That was going to be another double. But he got enough of it with the leather to preserve the Braves' lead. Look at this. And he's playing pretty well off the line here. He had to go a long ways to get a glove on that ball and just did get there. A fraction of a second later and that ball's by him. Another run is in. This kept the runner from scoring, holding Ken at third. So now runners at the corners and two outs for Hunley. Who leads the team in RBIs with 13. He has doubled tonight and struck out. Avery did a good job of getting ahead of him in the count last time up. That's a bouncer. Might get him out of the inning. Blauser has it. Throws to second for the out. A good play by Jeff Blauser after the ball got by Oliva. So Avery out of trouble, but not before the Mets get a run on three hits. No errors. Two left. We go to the seventh. Braves now leading it two to one. lead it two to one as we go to the seventh and check out tonight's Aflac trivia question in 1962 the Mets were 40 and 120 which pitcher led the staff with 10 wins <laughs> I'll give you the answer in the bottom half of the inning looks like Steve Avery's night is finished at a good outing as we go to the seventh here's Pete okay thank you Joe Dwight Smith leads it off against Brett Saberhagen and drills the first pitch right center field that's going to fall in for at least one Butler over quickly gets a glove on it Smith trying for two here's Butler's throw and Dwight Smith slides in safely with a leadoff double so a good start to the Atlanta seventh as Dwight Smith picks up the Braves fourth hit of the night Dwight's done a good job filling in his pinch hitting has been outstanding, but tonight he's been on base twice with a walk and now a double. His second double of the year, now Jose Oliva, who has fouled to the catcher and grounded out to short. This will be an interesting at bat. Oliva is yes, a pull hitter, but you don't want him to pull the ball here. You want him to hit the ball to the right side, get that runner over to third. See if he can do that. He does a good job of it. Ground ball to second. Kent on to first in time. There's the runner over at third. So Jose Oliva scoring some points with management with that at bat terrific job and actually the Mets are the first team that we've seen this year play Oliva to right center a little bit they know about his power that way and they know that when he's successful that's the way he hits the ball but did a good job of leading with his hands on that swing and 
There are many high teammate. fives in the dugout for that out as you'd get for a base hit. You bet. Getting that runner over to third. Now Charlie O'Brien who drove in the first two Atlanta runs with a two run homer and a chance to do more damage here. Runner at third, one out. And taking up high from Saberhagen, ball one. Charlie's a fly ball hitter. He doesn't make many outs on the ground. And with the infield in, he's just looking for something from Saberhagen up that he can drive. Here's the 1 0. That just missed outside. Two and nothing, we count. One man out, Dwight Smith at third. O'Brien takes a strike, two and one. Two and oh, breaking ball from Saberhagen. You got to lay off that pitch. A good one by Saberhagen. Here's the two one, and that stayed high. Three and one the count now. Saberhagen's been one of those guys like Maddox Pete who's able to pitch in an inning like this where he's not afraid to walk a guy to. Look ahead, maybe think about getting a double play to get out of an inning and not allow a run. Hates to give in to anybody. Great grab by the third baseman, Edgardo Alfonso. And is this 21-year-old showing us something tonight or what? Offensively and defensively. A hanging breaking ball, too, so he saved Saberhagen here. Charlie O'Brien hits it right on the nose again. But right at him. Braves have been hitting in some tough luck the last few days. There's another good example of it. Two men out now with Dwight Smith at third and Mark Lemke the batter. He is twice grounded out to second. One ball, no strikes. Something else too, Pete. That ball was hit so sharply. It's amazing that Dwight Smith had quick enough reactions to get back to the bag. High in the air, right center field and deep. Everett chasing it, so is Butler. Butler has a beat on it, and just shy of the track, he puts it away. And Saberhagen gets out of the inning, stranding that runner at third. So some good defensive plays by the New York Mets, and we go to the bottom half of inning seven with the Braves still up by one. Seventh inning stretch time here at Shea Stadium. Time to check out the answer to tonight's Aflac trivia question. The pitcher that led the 1962 Mets in victories with 10. Roger Craig, 10 and 24. He had quite a year for a ball club that lost 120. <laughs> You're talking over on radio, yeah. Pete, about so many guys off that ball club that uh, became managers. Became managers as, as we look at the changes made by the Braves here. Mike Kelly takes over in right field. He'll bat ninth. And the new pitcher is Greg McMichael, and there are his numbers on the air. Yeah, of the 22 original expansion Mets, three of them became Major League Managers. Gil Hodges right here in New York. Roger Craig, of course, with several teams. And Don Zimmer, who managed several ball clubs. Bottom half of the seventh inning, Carl Everett leads it off for New York. He's over two. He's out and flat out. Good effort by Steve Avery tonight. Six innings, six hits, one run, no walks. And one strikeout. And some pressure on the much maligned Brave bullpen. Only a one run lead to protect. Well, you were looking at two ball clubs tonight the Braves and the Mets, who have both had bullpen problems. The Mets worse than the Braves. Braves bullpen ERA is 5.06. The Mets bullpen ERA is 7.13. And we're trying to bunt his way on, fouling it back to count 0 and 2. The only New York reliever who has performed well is John Franco, but they haven't been able to get to him in many games. Well, the Braves can't get to their bullpen either because Saberhagen's only faced one over the minimum since the third inning. Here's the 0-2, and that is all for Carl Everett. McMichael recording the strikeout, one gone. It continues to be fascinating to me about how when Greg McMichael faces some young hitter, a rookie, how... He just dominates them with his changeup. Reminds you a lot in that regard of Gene Garber. Gene Garber, first time a hitter saw him, you could almost guarantee a strikeout. Both the delivery and the off speed stuff. Manzanillo up now in the Mets bullpen. As 
is Ricky Otero. Steps in, he's over two, is grounded to second, grounded to short, running up to butt. And the count on one. That's outside, one ball, one strike. Two runs, four hits for the Braves, a run, six hits for the New York Mets. It is one and two now on Ricky Otero. Only in five feet five, 150 pounds. And again, a good changeup had him fooled. Another situation where Otero has not seen McMichael before. And the one two on the way, and he gets himself another strikeout. So the theory works on both Carl Everett and Ricky Otero, the first two Mets hitters retired by strikeouts. Now a guy that has seen him before, Jose Vizcaino. This looked like a breaking ball and was. Down and in, good pitch. Vizcaino for two tonight, couple of ground outs, one to short, one to second. Pitch on the way is taken outside ball one. Braves got their two runs in the second, a two-run homer by Charlie O'Brien in the sixth inning. The Mets got their only run of the game. And a sack fly by Edgardo Alfonso after Brett Saberhagen that doubled the lead off the inning. One ball, one strike now on Jose Vizcaino. One thing about this Met ball club going back to last year was the way they played coming down the stretch toward the strike. They had gotten within three games of 500 and actually had climbed into third place in the National League East. They were 55 and 58 when the strike hit. Here's the 1 1. Little dribbler out toward the third base side of the mound and no chance for the play by Charlie O'Brien. This guy, you know, has got himself a 15 foot single. And you know what it did? Knocked Brett Saberhagen right out of the ball game. That may be a break if McMichael can retire Bronya. Rico Bronya up to pinch hit now for Brett Saberhagen. He's off to a terrific start for the Mets this year. Bronya is hitting 394. He has three homers and seven RBIs. And you look at a list of league leaders in the National League going into tonight's game. You'll find Bronya ranks seventh in the league in hitting. Second in the league in slugging percentage. Let's take a look while we've got a chance at the Hardy's leaderboard and in the National League, New York Mets with 16 homers. That's second only to the Cleveland Indians in all of baseball. Giants in Cincinnati close behind. Saberhagen pitched well, but because of the infield hit, his work will be limited to seven innings tonight. Two men out with this guy, you know, at first, and here's Bronya. Mets might have themselves a little problem putting together their best lineup in any given day. They'd like to have Bronya in there, of course, with the start he's off to. That's the left-handed pitcher, Steve Avery, did not get the start tonight. They've got to figure out what they're going to do with Bobby Bonilla if they want Alfonso playing third base. They've got Bonilla playing first tonight. You might see Bonilla wind up back in the outfield before it's all over. That could be, and it's funny because the Mets are four and seven coming in, and all four of their wins have come against left-handed starters. Michael chases this guy in back. I think the question all people are asking themselves is, is Rico Bronya for real? Is he the Bronya that played well for the Mets last year or the guy that the Tigers gave up on? Here's the 0 1. Good off speed pitch. The count nothing in two on Rico Bronya. Two men out, a runner first. We're in the bottom of the seventh. Braves holding on to a two to one lead. Right to the second baseman, Mark Lemke. And McMichael. Gets through the seventh in good shape. Nothing doing for the New York Mets. We go to the eighth inning. It's still two to one, Atlanta.
And as we go to the eighth inning here at Shea Stadium, the new pitcher for the Mets, right-hander Josias Manzanillo, making his sixth appearance out of the Mets bullpen. No record and a sky-high run average of over 11. He's given up seven runs and ten hits in five and two-thirds innings. Also, Pete, defensively, Bronya stays in the game to play first base, and he's going to move Bobby Bonilla over to third base. And it looks like Alfonso is out of the ball game. Or did he move to short? That's what I'm looking. He's at shortstop now, Alfonso. So several changes for the Mets. Bonilla at third, Alfonso at short now. Bronia at first with Manzanillo on the mound. And Manzanillo will hit in the eighth spot in the order. And here's Mike Kelly, who came in as part of a double switch in the bottom half of the seventh, leading it off against Manzanillo. Saber Hagen, seven innings, four hits, two runs. Both earned. He walked one, and he struck out five. Kelly taking a strike in the inside corner on one. One thing that Dallas Green said today about his bullpen, and as we mentioned earlier, only John Franco has pitched well for the Mets out of their bullpen. First the pitch. Inside one ball, one strike. And it makes sense, Joe. He said, we've got a lot of guys who are trying to make this bullpen when we have to cut three pitchers next week as you see all these very high earned run averages and he said I would think with the short spring training that some of these guys might be volunteering to come out here and do some extra work try to speed up their progress and getting into 100 percent condition after the short spring training and he said he's only seen a scattered instance or two of players doing more than they're asked to do by the pitching coach or volunteering to come out here early and work. Well, he admits he's from the old school. He doesn't feel like begging or, you know, patting anybody on the back you're enough to get him to do things. He feels like if you're a big league player, you ought to have enough, enough initiative to want to work hard to stay here. What's the word he has? Accountable. You should be accountable yeah. for your position in the major leagues. Just because you have, wear a big league uniform doesn't make you a big league player. The true test is over time. Well, here's Marquise Grissom. And he takes ball one outside. Grissom tonight is 0 for 3. If Manzanillo has a scoreless inning, something that he delights the fans with are his sprints to the dugout. He will race off a la Pascual Perez if he has an easy inning. And so far he has Jeff Kent in shallow center field for out number two. There have been times where his arrival in the dugout is anything less than spectacular, too. He has slipped and fallen and tripped and <laughs> fallen into several dugouts doing that. Now Jeff Blauser, who has popped out, was hit by a pitch and he also singled. Jeff now up to 244 for the year, so his average is on the rise. And he takes a fastball strike inside corner on one. Two starting pitchers who came into the ball game struggling a little bit, very high ERAs, pitched more like their normal selves tonight. Avery and Saberhagen, both good job. Now it's up to the bullpens. One ball, one strike. On Jeff Blauser. On the ground, deep short. Alfonso, another nice play. Can he throw him out? Yes, he can. Boy, he's had a nice ball game. And there goes Manzanillo after a 1 2 3 inning. He gets there before we can add up the totals for the inning. Nothing across for the Atlanta Braves in the eighth, still 2 to 1. Here we go, bottom half of the eighth inning. Braves up two to one. Got to tell you, great line I heard while working the playoffs. Joey Crawford is an NBA referee who is the brother of Jerry Crawford, who's a National League umpire. Went up to Danny Ainge beginning of the playoffs and said, Danny, I finally figured out what you and Michael have in common. And Danny said, what's that? He said, neither one of you can play baseball. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. It's outside, one ball, one strike. Well, if you if you ever run into Danny Ainge again, you can tell him that I remember a night in the Kingdom in Seattle where he actually hit a home run. I think his first major league homer. Here's the 1-1. Little chopper hit up the middle. Nice play by Mark Lemke on the first in time to get Brett Butler. One down. That's a big out to get. You don't want Butler getting on to start something this late in the game in a one-run ball game. And anymore, you want the ball hit the mark, mm -hmm. no matter what the situation. He is doing such a great job defensively. His streak now at 77 games without an error. 
And here is Edgardo Alfonso and a little meeting on the mound. Joey O'Brien taking this kid a little more seriously. But he's strong. Three at bats tonight. He's grounded out, doubled, and had a sack fly. Well, we'll see what kind of luck he has. His first look at Greg McMichael. The other two first timers, Carl Everett and Ricky Otero, were strikeout victims an inning ago. Squaring the butt takes a strike on one. And Greg started him with a good fastball. Maybe Charlie wanted to get ahead quickly and then work on him with some off speed stuff. Make him supply the power. One ball, one strike on Alfonso. One of the nice things about Charlie O'Brien, watch him from the center field camera, how quickly he gets set up with a target, and what a nice target he shows to the pitchers. That caught the outside corner in the count one and two. And he sets that target dead center. He's just, he's just terrific. Really frames the ball well. Very calm back there. He's like he's sitting in a rocking chair. In foul territory, first base side, Fred McGriff with a long run, and he runs out of room. Not much foul ground here at Shea Stadium down the lines. We that remains one and two. Sorry, Pete, we mentioned what kind of year Alfonso had last year at Double A with 15 homers, 75 RBIs. The year before at St. Lucie, A ball, 86 RBIs with 11 homers, and he's been a 310 minor league hitter since starting in 91. So he has come along fast out of Venezuela. One ball, two strikes. Braves leading it two to one. We're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. That's Charlie. We got to wait now while Lemke ties his shoe. But just watch Charlie how he gets situated, waits for the hitter to get ready, and very calming influence back there for the pitchers. Fouled off again by Alfonso. It remains one ball, two strikes. Some catchers you watch, and they're very late putting the glove up. I mean, the pitcher is winding up, and when he picks up home plate in the windup, that's when the catcher flips the glove up. One that comes to late. My, one that comes to mind, Benito Santiago that has done that throughout his career. He'll throw that target up at the last second. In the air to right field. Mike Kelly waits for it out there. And there's out number two. I know we've been seeing the phrases of Alfonso tonight, but this guy hits everything right on the nose. Everything's solid. Second baseman, Jeff Kent. Number 12. Now Jeff Kent, who is grounded out to third, fouled out to the catcher, and doubled. This could be a big hitter for Greg McMichael. You've got Bobby Bonilla on deck. You'd much rather have him leading off an inning. And coming up with a chance to turn the game around with one swing of the bat. There's a call strike on one. Well, let's face it, the Braves' bats have got to get busy. Yeah, even coming into this game, the team batting average of 240 it was 13th in the National yeah. League. Only team below the Braves' batting average, the Florida Marlins. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Deep to left field by Kent. And we are all tied up. As Jeff Kent connects for his second home run of the year to tie the game at two. Shot of Bobby Cox in the dugout. He was looking Leo Mazzoni to ask him, was it a changeup? He was able to retire the rookies with it. But Jeff Kent got all of this one. Changeup came right into him and he waited for it. Looking for it all the way. See how he stayed back? Mm. So we're tied at two after Jeff Kent's second homer of the year, his fourth RBI. Count of nothing and one now on Bobby Bonilla. That's the second home run allowed by Greg McMichael this year. And the reason that is news is all of last year he allowed only one home run. Well, it's the second in two outings, isn't it? He didn't mm -hmm. give up one to Dalton. Yes, he did. Darren Dalton of the Phillies two days ago. Here's the one one to Bonilla. Missing low two and one. Two runs, four hits for the Braves. Two runs, eight hits for the Mets. You look down at the Braves bullpen. Mark Wallers, the right hander. Mike Stanton, the lefty are up. And a 2 1 pitch now to Bonilla. Way out in front, 2 and 2.
So neither starting pitcher will be involved in the decision in this one. Sharply hit. Nice play by Mark Lemke, who had that hole plugged in the right side. Throws out Bonilla for out number three. But a one swing of the bat by Jeff Kent has tied it. We go to the ninth inning, 2-2. Two -two. Greg McMichael, along with his thoughts in the Braves dugout, we're tied going to the ninth inning, and the last two games of this series will also be on television tomorrow night on Sports South at 7:30. Ernie Johnson and Skip Carey will be bringing that one to you, and then we'll be back with you on TBS on Thursday, beginning at 7:35. Tomorrow's matchup: Kent Merker against Pete Harnish. Thursday, we'll have John Smoltz against one of the top young pitchers, I think, in the National League, Bobby Jones of the Mets. Due up in the ninth inning for Atlanta, Chipper Jones, Fred McGriff, and then a pinch hitter for the pitcher. That home run that McMichael gave up back in April of 93 was to Lonnie Smith. And Osias Manzanillo about to work his second inning. He had a 1 2 3 8. That home run did wonders for Brett Saberhagen, who pitched well, was about to suck up a loss, and probably broke the heart of Steve Avery, who pitched well, was about to pick up a win. Neither one will figure, as you said, for the decision. Chipper Jones will start things off here tonight. He has struck out, singled, and into a 6 4 force play. You think about that runner the Braves had, though, at third base in the seventh inning with one out and couldn't get him home. Zanillo delivers to Chipper and misses low ball one. It was this Mets bullpen that blew that 11 to 4 lead against the Cincinnati Reds over the weekend. Wound up losing the game 13 to 11. 2 0 to count now on Chipper Jones. swing of his bat Chipper Jones has untied the game it's 3-2 Atlanta as Chipper Jones connects for a leadoff homer to start the ninth inning that's not going to win any points with your manager if your team fights back to, to tie it I think that's Chipper Jones first big league home run it, it is. is and that was what a it. time for it yeah and a rocket too it's okay Chipper you can smile <laughs> Got a count in his favor and drilled it. Great extension. Look how he gets the head of the bat out there on that pitch. Mm. So the Braves are back on top 3 2, and now Fred McGriff. Making one low and inside. I got out of here in a hurry. First major league home run, and it might be a game winner. Kyle back from McGriff, one and one. McGriff 0 for 3 tonight. He has grounded out the second, struck out, into a 4 6 3 double play. The fifth double play that Fred McGriff has grounded into in this young season and leads the National League. You were talk, talking, you and I were talking about them evening out because Chipper's been hitting in some tough luck. That's a good way to make sure nobody can get a glove on one. Absolutely. 3 2 Atlanta. Here's the pitch to McGriff, and he fouls this one back to count 1 and 2. Braves trying to snap a four-game losing streak, and now that they've got the lead, Brad Klontz is getting ready out of the Atlanta bullpen. Here's the one-two, way outside, two and two. Another thing that managers will look for, Joe, in their bullpen. Now Manzanillo came in trailing in the game in the eighth inning, had a one-two three inning, breezed right through it with his team behind. Then the Mets came back and got the run to tie it up. And many times you will see, as Fred McGriff looks at strike three call, many times you will see relief pitchers who are on the bubble trying to make a ball club come in and pitch well when a team is behind with a game on the line, not be able to get the job done. 
Yeah, they want to see what you're what you're made of when things change around a little bit and the weight is on your shoulders. Now Mike Sharperson up to pinch hit for Greg McMichael. Were what he had accomplished in Richmond. That's Doug Henry now in the Mets bullpen. One man out here in the ninth. And that's drilled down the left field line by Sharperson, but has a hook to it. It's going to land foul up in the seats at the count 0 and 2. Still looks strange to see him in a Braves uniform yes, after it? all those years <laughs> with the Dodgers, doesn't it? That's right. From Stone Mountain. High in the air, shallow left center field. Alfonso with a long run. Butler coming, so is the left fielder Otero. And Otero makes a sliding catch out there in left center field. Good play by the rookie. We're out number two. Otero's an, a really a center fielder with Butler on the team. He's going to have to play left or right. And really went a long way for that one. Nice play. His glove's about half as big as he is. His glove and Brett Butler's glove. Both huge. Now Jose Oliva is over three. And it's behind in the count on one. So we can look for Brian Plotz to take over in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Hundley, Everett, and Otero do up for the Mets. Foul back, nothing in two. The count now on Jose Oliva. Chipper Jones, first major league homer here in the ninth inning. Giving the Braves back their one-run lead. On the ground, right to the shortstop, Alfonso. And that'll do it for Atlanta. Antonio sprinting off, but not nearly as happy as he was an inning ago. After giving up that home run to Chipper Jones, we go to the bottom half of the night. 3-2 Atlanta. Bottom half of the ninth inning, Josias Manzanillo hoping his Mets can rally, get him off the hook. It'll be Todd Hunter leading it off against Brad Plunts, who comes on to make appearance number six of the season. No wins or losses, but he has all three of the Braves saves this year. And Greg McMichael, now the pitcher of record for Atlanta, could pick up the win here if Plunts can get him out here in the bottom of the ninth. Todd Hundley will lead off. He's one for three and a double back in the second. Steve Avery worked the first six innings. This game allowed a run, six hits, no walks, and a strikeout. McMichael worked two innings, allowed two hits, a run, no walks, two strikeouts, so no walks issued by Braves pitching tonight. And in a tight, low-scoring game like this one, that's important. Got some pop coming up, too, so it's important they try to keep Hundley off the sacks with his four home runs. Three have come left-handed. Open stance as he faces Brad Plunts. Ooh, and he went, says plate umpire Dana DeMuth. The count on one. Boy, was that a sharp breaker. His mistake the other day to Varsho, who got the game winning hit for the Phillies, was he just he threw him a sinker that didn't move and it just stayed up about belt high. Nothing in one the count on Hundley. Plant seems unshakable, though. You know, even after that ball game, he didn't seem all that disturbed. This one all the way to the backstop. Hit him. Hit him. They're going to send him down to first base, and apparently Nick Hundley on the way by. And an unhappy Bobby Cox on the bullpen phone. Try to throw in the same pitch, a hard breaking slider, and it must have just nicked Hunley. Right on the left, his back leg, but got his left shin just a little bit. Pinch runner for Hunley is going to be Tim Bogar. So Bogar now at first. And the batter, Carl Everett, who is grounded on third fly to right and struck out up here in a bunt situation now. Oliva in on the grass at third. to first Bogar back.
Remember, the Mets lead the major leagues in sacrifices. They have one tonight. Everett squares the pitch out. Runner wasn't going anywhere. Ball on the count, and Carl Everett. Kind of an odd mix. Yeah, usually when a team is hitting the long ball, the managers don't sacrifice quite as often. Usually a team that leads the league in sacrifices is the one that really has to manufacture a lot of runs. Of course, it's early in the season. We'll see how those numbers hold up as we go along here. 2-0 oh the count on Carl Everett. Nobody out. Bogart first. We're in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Gets the punt down toward first. McGriff bobbling it now recovers and throws to Lemke covering. Down the second goes Bogart, and Everett does his job. Mark Wallers and Mike Stanton up in the Atlanta bullpen as Ricky Otero comes to the plate. Well, Otero th for three is grounded to second, grounded to short, and struck out. Sorry, Pete, I was just going to say you're through all of the switch hitters once you get past Otero, with the exception of. David Segui, who's still on the bench and available to Dallas Green. But a good sign from these young players and the way Dallas Green wants them to play. They're doing a good job of executing the fundamentals. And this is inside. Oh, call a strike by plate umpire Dana Demute. Braves might have gotten a break on that call. They're right up on top of the plate on Plonks. All the left-handed hitters that have come up this inning, real close to the inside corner. Oh, and two, the count down. Pitcher's spot is due up next. Rico Bronia's come out on the on-deck circle. You have to have somebody out there, but he's not due up until the number nine spot on the order. Dallas Green still trying to decide who he wants to use to pinch hit. For Manzanillo. Here's the 0 2. He fouled it off, does stay alive. The count of nothing in two. He did that his last time up, fouled up several, fouled off several pitches. David Sagi now takes over in the on deck circle. He will be the pinch hitter. One man out, a runner at second. Braves up 3 2, bottom of the ninth. The 0-2 pitch to Otero popped him up. Shallow left field. Blouser back. Chipper Jones in. Jones had him played very shallow out there. Didn't have far to go to get that one for out number two. So Klontz needs one more out. And the man he has to get, David Segui. He will be the pinch hitter for Manzanillo. Segui off to a 2.31 start this year with a homer and five RBI. Pinch this will be his first Mets. pinch hit appearance. Number 21, David Segui. You know, Klontz did this before. I, mean, I, I thought I remembered another ball game. It came against the Marlins. He earned his third save back on May 3rd and started the ninth inning when he hit Gary Sheffield. But then he was able to get a double play, gave up another hit to Pendleton, but was able to retire Colburn in the ball game. But you're right. He's, he, he doesn't rattle out there. A lot of young no. pitchers new to the major leagues wouldn't be able to pitch around those situations the way Klontz has to this point. Yeah, when I said he wasn't disturbed, that doesn't mean it didn't bother him. I just say, I'm just saying that he's able to rebound pretty well for a young player. Of course, he's been a relief pitcher his entire professional career, and that helps having been in these situations over and over and over again coming up through the minor leagues. Here's the pitch to Sagi, and it's taken low, ball one. Two men out, a runner at second in the ninth. And the Braves up 3 2. Hitters facing Klontz who have not seen him before almost always come away saying the same thing. Hey, he throws hard for a side armor. Yeah, I think most people when they go up there against a guy like this, they're just expecting nothing but sinkers and sliders with not a whole lot on the sinker, but he'll surprise you. One ball, one strike. There's 
the potential tying run. Bogart down at second. And the 1-1 one, one on the way. Fly ball, straight away center. This should do it. Marquise Grissom there for the catch. And the Braves snap their four-game losing streak. Thanks to Chipper Jones, first Major League homer in the top half of the ninth inning. And rookie Brad Klontz recording his fourth save of this young season. And the Braves do it thanks to Chipper Jones, who is our AutoZone player of the game. He hits his first big league homer to right field. We'll take another look at the swing. Watch the extension of the head of the bat off of Manzanillo. There was no doubt about it. Congratulations to Chipper, our AutoZone player of the game. Braves snap a four-game skid. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this.